So I'm going to talk about uh, treatment of uh, MAC. And so MAC, uh, we all know, is somewhat of a vexing clinical problem. It's relatively common, anywhere from 15 to 30 percent of elderly patients can have some degree of mitral annual calcification. And some of the challenge with this is that the annual calcification can pose surgical risk in terms of myocardial disruption, AV glue disruption from invasion, invasion of the myocardium from the MAC. So there are a number of patients in whom there can be MAC, and these patients cannot have surgery due to that risk. And also, these patients are frequently included, excluded from a number of the TMBR studies. Now, many of you know that uh, uh, Sapien has been used for MAC uh, previously, and uh, Meyer Guerrero is to be commended for leading uh, this charge. Uh, this is a patient of ours who had uh, a Sapien placed for severe mitral calcification and MR. Uh, but one of the complications that can happen in these patients is that you can get severe LVAT obstruction. So if you look on the right-hand side here, uh, this is the uh, LVAT gradient after uh, the sapien has been put in, and unfortunately this patient didn't do well. And you can also have issues with malposition and embolization, and unfortunately the 30-day mortality in the latest series of sapien for severe MAC is actually about 30%. So I'm going to show you a case here that hopefully will pave the way, I think, for what may be a better option for treatment of severe uh, MAC. And this is a 74-year-old woman who uh, came to us with severe heart failure. You can see here in the top right-hand side, there's severe MR. And if you look in the lower left-hand side, there's also severe mitral calcification. This is how it looked on the CT scan. You can see this almost circumferential uh, mitral calcification. She also had this very large, it's either a stalactite or stalagmite, however you describe it, uh, from the anterior horn uh, protruding down towards the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve. So because of this degree of calcification, and also when we looked at the myocardium, you could see that a lot of this MAC was invading the myocardium, and we really didn't feel that this patient would be a good surgical candidate my surgeon who saw him felt that this patient, the risk of AV groove disruption would be just uh, too high and essentially prohibitive. So this is how we treated the patient. We used a tendine valve. This is a transapical system. I know many of you are familiar with this uh, platform for TMBR. It has some advantages in that it's anatomically shaped in the shape of a T. Uh, that allows it to be sized very close to the true annular size uh, of the valve itself. So it doesn't require a severe amount of oversizing. It has an outer and inner frame that allows the inner function uh, of the frame to function well and be protected from the annular uh, issues, and it's anchored by a tether with a hemostatic pad. Now another important uh, feature of this uh, technology is that it's retrievable and repositionable, so if one were to get into trouble with embolization, LVT obstruction, or malposition, it could be retrieved and repositioned if necessary. So this is how we did the patient. This was almost uh, two and a half years ago. We went to the FDA and got compassionate use approval for Tendine uh, to do uh, this patient with severe MAC. And we, what we did is we actually started by creating a rail. And uh, you can see here uh, there's a rail that's coming up from the transfemoral uh, uh, across the atrial septum. And the reason why we did this rail is because I knew I would have to dilate and move that anterior calcification out of the way to make sure that the valve would fully expand. Uh, we just did not have any idea as to whether or not that valve would expand with the tendine in place. And so what I'm doing here is uh, we've created the rail and we're passing a catheter up and down to make sure that we're free of the cords. And then by having this rail in place, when we do this balloon dilatation, if there's a catastrophic outcome from the balloon dilatation, we can go right in uh, with the tendine valve to go right in and take care of the patient's MR immediately. I can tell you at this point, this is one of those wet your pants type moments because uh, we didn't have any idea how this valve was going to respond uh, to this balloon, but it responded very well. And we actually did three separate inflations, including one with a high pressure true uh, balloon. We then take the tendine valve and put it in, and you can see here, this is a 3D image from the surgeon's view in the upper left hand side uh, showing it being extruded. It fit beautifully. Uh, and we've now done five patients like this. Uh, and you can see in the lower left-hand side, this has been the result in every single one of the patients. Uh, there's not been one trickle of uh, regurgitation in these patients. The valve has fit very well, and the patients uh, have been able to be discharged from the home successfully. 
So this is another picture of the CT scan, and you can almost imagine how the tendine valve with this shape is actually almost designed perfectly to fit inside this mitral calcification. So here, this is a side view, and then here on the top right-hand side, you can see uh, the outer frame conforming t towards that severe MAC with the inner frame being protected in a circular configuration to uh, enable uh, integrated blood flow without regurgitation. So with that, uh, I'm very pleased to announce that we've received FDA approval for an IDE study. Uh, Vino Tarani and I will be leading this early feasibility study. Uh, we're launching uh, this fall. Uh, there will be a number of sites uh, in the United States uh, that will be part of this. We're very excited uh, to see this go forth because I do think uh, that this hopefully will be a successful option uh, for patients with severe MAC. Uh, we anticipate at least 30, centers in 10, uh, 30 patients in 10 centers with, again, LOTCH uh, this fall. So I do think that TMVR is going to be the uh, solution for a lot of these patients with severe MAC. It will require uh, a dedicated prosthesis for this unique pathology. I like the idea of something reversible and self-expanding because uh, I do know that it works already. So thank you very much.